All right, welcome back to Way of the Ranch, and today's very special episode is American Bagpipes, otherwise known as distributors. We're also going to talk about the basic fundamentals of ignition systems and uh, wrap up this first season, first edition of how to become a gearhead on ignition systems as a whole. Uh, so don't go anywhere. All right, let's start really simple. So what does a distributor look like? Well, these are both distributors. This one's from an older American V8 engine, and this is from an older four-cylinder Japanese car. So if this is a distributor, what does it do? Well, remember we just learned that car parts names usually tell you or give you a hint of what they do. So a distributor takes electricity from our ignition coil and distributes it to the proper cylinder at the proper time and the distributor is usually responsible for making slight adjustments for when that spark happens based off of a couple things like RPM or revolutions per minute or how fast the engine is spinning and also load conditions. So is the car sitting at idle at a traffic light going low speed through town or are you mashing that gas pedal and going as fast as you can? Those uh, require different ignition timings. All right, so how do you find your distributor? Well, we're going to look at this 1991 Cadillac DeVille and see if we can find it. All right, so we're taking a look at the engine bay here. You can see there's an engine cover here, and on the top it's stamped with V8. So that's telling us that this is an eight-cylinder motor, and so we're going to have eight spark plug wires to start looking for. So down on this end here, I can start seeing the wires here, and if I just follow the wires back up, I'll notice that there is a collection of eight spark plugs right over here. So this is our distributor. All right, 1991 Cadillac is kind of an old car. Let's look at a 2008 Toyota Yaris and find our distributor. Yeah, I got you, some of you got it. This car is not gonna have a distributor. In fact, distributors have not been on any cars since 2008, that was like the last car. And really they were phased out almost in 2000. So you're not gonna see a distributor on a newer car. They use something different. So some of you are thinking already, so if distributors have been gone for almost 20 years, then why the heck are you talking about them still? Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. The first one is you never know when you're gonna get yourself a cool old car, an old muscle car that still has an old distributor in it. Uh, you never know when you're gonna be fixing or repairing a friend's or relative's car that's 25 years old. And the really big reason for me and why I like to teach people about it is if you can understand the fundamentals and how these old school mechanical parts used to change your timing, then you will really have a good understanding of how the computers do it on nowadays cars. So on a newer car, you're not gonna find a distributor, but you are gonna have a computer. And this computer is set up to monitor different sensors, input sensors on your engine, to tell different load conditions and speed and the position of different parts like your crank and camshaft inside your engine. And it decides when are the optimal times to fire that spark plug and it does it for you. All distributors have to be mechanically driven. They are mechanically moving components inside here in a shaft. And on the end of these shafts is some way to drive it off of something else internally in the motor. Usually it's a camshaft or a crankshaft. And in this case, there is a gear, a helical gear that meshes in the V8 motor. And in this one, there's actually a little spline that goes in here. Now to open up these distributors, you have something here called a distributor cap that sits on the top. There's a center hole here. This is where your spark plug wire is going to your external ignition coil. And then each one of these around the perimeter are gonna be spark plug wires going to your spark plugs. And in this case, there's four of them because this is a four cylinder engine. Now to be able to get into here, there's usually a strap on the side here or two. So you just basically pull it off and then the cap comes off. And when you take your distributor cap off, you're gonna notice some other things here. So from the center terminal where our ignition coil and the electricity is coming from into our distributor, it runs through down into the center here on this spring-loaded carbon brush. And it's spring-loaded in carbon because we want to have the electricity go through the center of the cap and go to the center of this part here. This is called the rotor. Now. We want that electrical connection to be good, but we can't have a fixed electrical connection. It has to be movable because this rotor spins. Whenever we move the shaft on the bottom, that rotor is gonna be spinning. So that spring-loaded carbon brush maintains electrical contact, but allows it to move without any issues. The other thing that's inside here is once that electricity transfers through into the rotor, as this is spinning, the electricity will start coming down to the tip of this rotor, and right here, 
once this rotor lines up with one of these contacts in the cap, there's a very, very, very small gap between the two, and so the electricity jumps that, comes back up to the other side, and runs down a spark plug wire to the spark plug for the cylinder in the perfect time. The cap and the rotor are considered consumable items. This is something you should be doing every two or three years on a car with a distributor, and it's part of your tune-up kind of package. What is happening to cause the need for replacing is these carbon brushes start to wear out, and these contacts here start to get burnt out. The gap gets widened, they're full of soot, and um, same thing with the end of the rotor. All right, so now we know that the distributor is mechanically linked to the engine, and so as the engine internal parts move, so does the shaft and our rotor moves. And it lines up with the cap and sends and distributes our spark plug when we need it. But the other thing that's going on is this distributor is also responsible for triggering when our ignition coil causes a collapse and we get electricity induced and ramped up to high voltages and comes to our distributor cap. So something has to trigger that. Now, what these distributors have is right in the center, that shaft is not actually round. It will have a bunch of bumps on it, which are called lobes, L-O-B-E-S. And it will have as many lobes as you have cylinders. So in this case, we're gonna have four bumps and it's a four cylinder motor. Now, these parts right here are called a breaker arm and right at the joining right there is a point. And when the shaft moves, you'll notice that those points right here separate. So this is right now on the top or the corner of that cam lobe. Every time one of those lobes goes by our spring-loaded breaker arm, you'll see that these points down here start to open up. And then as it comes off the lobe, that breaker arm is spring-loaded, it comes back and closes those points like this. Open closed, open, closed, open, closed. Now, those points are part of an electrical circuit for our ignition coil. So whenever those points are connected, we are allowing electricity to flow through to our ignition coil, build up a magnetic field, saturate the secondary windings, and as soon as you break that circuit, the electricity stops going to the coil, the magnetic field collapses, which causes an induction of electricity into our secondary windings. And because of the ratio, it gets wound up to about 20, 30,000 volts, and it comes down the wire to the center of our distributor cap. All right, so looking at another distributor here, you can see a little bit better of the cam lobes I'm talking about. So this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those lobes. So this would be for a V8 engine. And as those lobes go by that little blue plastic piece, you're gonna see these points separate. So open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. These points are also replaceable and are also a consumable component because the electricity sometimes jumps between those points and it starts to erode and have issues electrically with a good contact there. So uh, you can get a replacement breaker arm and contacts and you can kind of see this principle working a little better. So this right here is a little plastic piece that would run on the cam lobe. And so as the cam lobe goes up and starts pushing, you can see the breaker arm moves away and separates those two points. So closed, open. All right, so we just learned in our spark plug video that electricity with high voltage loves to jump little gaps. So that makes it a problem for old school mechanical point systems and distributors because every time that cam goes by and opens up our gap, electricity is going to want to try to jump between that and take a little bit of metal with it and so these points start to degrade. So they have to design something in here to be able to lengthen how long those points last. And what they came up with is one of these guys. So in an automotive world, these things are called a condenser, but everywhere else and in the electronics world, these are called capacitors. Kind of looks like a little silver container with a single wire going to it, and this grounds out to the metal inside the distributor. All right, so these condensers are kind of like little batteries. They can store 
a little bit of electricity. The only thing that's different is once they are full of electricity, they tend to stop electricity from flowing in the circuit that they're attached to. So why this is useful is when we have electricity flowing through the circuit, that's an easier path than the going to the condenser. So it goes to the ignition coil and allows that magnetic field to start building inside of our coil. Now, when we trigger the collapse of that magnetic field, the electricity in that circuit still kind of wants to keep going. But it's got two choices, jump a gap, which is really hard to do, or it can actually go through into this empty capacitor. So for a split second, the electricity gets rerouted because it's easier to go into our condenser. And then microseconds later, this gets closed again, and the electricity flows from there and empties and drains out, and electricity continues to go back to the ignition coil, and the process repeats itself. All right, so this system was in distributors for a long time, and it worked well as long as everything was maintained and clean and working properly. But after a couple of years, if you didn't change your points, the points would start having problems causing that circuit to open and close, so you'd start having issues that way. And then the other thing is, we'd actually have wear and tear on the breaker arm and that cam because there's a mechanical movement here and, and friction and wear going on constantly in your motor. And you gotta remember this thing's spinning way faster than I'm spinning it. So engineers came up with a better solution. All right, enter the digital age where we replace some stuff here. So we get rid of the opening and closing points that have wear issues. And we now have a reluctor wheel and a pickup coil. And they are, when this thing spins on the shaft, it doesn't touch the pickup coil, but goes very, very close. Now inside the pickup coil is a magnet wrapped up with a wire and it has its permanent magnet magnetic field and every time one of these fins of the reluctor wheel go by it cuts through the lines of the magnetic field coming out from there which actually induces a little bit of voltage and that little bit of voltage goes to a ignition module which triggers the collapse of our ignition coil. If you had a distributor with a center post and a spark plug wire, then you also had an ignition coil externally like this, but they also made some improvements over the years with that as well. So if you had one of these distributors, it was called HEI or high energy ignition system, and um, they got rid of the spark plug wire and the external coil and they just put the coil on top. So once you take the two screws off here, this cover comes off and then you can see that there is your ignition coil inside here. All right, let's pop open one of these guys and see what's inside and what's different. Now, if you had one of these ones, there were a slightly different way of getting these open with these little hooks, the little spring-loaded hooks. So you pushed down on it and turned to get the hook to come off the bottom, and you just went around and you did all of them. All right, looking inside of this one, you can see we still have the little graphite brush that's in there. These ones aren't usually spring-loaded because these rotors are spring-loaded themselves. The contact kind of is on a long little piece of flexible metal. Uh, but we still have a rotor, and we still have the little parts for the end of our rotor to the electricity jump and go to the proper spark plug. Now some differences. We're going to have to take this apart a little bit. We've got a little connector here to connect our electricity from our coil. And there's our rotor that just simply screws on and off. On an HEI distributor, we've got some different stuff going on, but very similar. We still have to have something that triggers the collapse of our magnetic field in our ignition coil. So in this case, what they have is they have a pickup coil in the center, and for each of those little triangle shaped points, there's going to be a cylinder in your car. So on this V8, there is eight of these little points. Now in the center here, when I turn the shaft, you'll notice that there is a little point there that lines up with that other big triangle on the pickup coil. Every time those two line up, we get a small little burst of voltage created, and that gets sent to this part here, which is called an ignition module. Now it takes that signal and it opens up the circuit going to our ignition coil, which causes that magnetic field to collapse, and the voltage gets transformed and stepped up to 20,000 volts. And depending where that rotor is inside, once that rotor starts pointing to one of these connections in here, then it comes back up through one of these posts to the spark plug wire, which goes to the spark plug for that cylinder at that exact time. Now, something different going on in here is this thing. Now, this looks a lot like our condenser in our old point system. 
it's the same part, but it's in here for a completely different reason. Now this one is actually to try to suppress the electromagnetic interference that's happening from our coil. And um, so that just absorbs any of that EMI noise so we don't get any kind of issues with sensors or hearing our ignition system in our radio. All right, so these guys up here are centrifugal or centrifugal weights that are speed dependent advancements for our distributor. So as this shaft in the distributor spins faster and faster and faster, basically the higher RPMs in the motor, the faster these go, these weights that are being held in with these springs, these springs are calibrated to start stretching and letting these go out at a certain amount of force created. So as these spins, the centrifugal force starts to pull these out. And what happens inside is if you take a look at that center part of the pickup coil, as this centrifugal force starts to go, you can see that it's actually causing those little fingers of the reluctor wheel to actually advance. And so that's going to start the spark a little bit sooner so that there's enough time to have that explosion and that maximum pressure inside our cylinders uh, at the right time at higher PMs. All right, so we have a really good idea of how centrifugal forces are acting on our mechanical advance based off of engine speed. I'm going to put two little dots of white, uh, white out on these arms here. And so that way when we're filming and spinning this at low speed, you'll be able to see the diameter or the distance between the two. And then as I increase the speed or increase the RPM on the motor, you'll see that the white dots will start to separate a bit. And that's showing you how the speed is actually acting on these weights and centrifugal forces is moving these out and advancing our timing. Okay, here we go. Now, as this mechanical advancement is happening on our reluctor wheel down underneath there, um, notice that this bar also moves uh, because not only do we have to initiate when the spark happens earlier, we have to make sure that the rotor is actually advanced a little bit too so that it's in time and lined up with the proper terminal inside the distributor cap. Otherwise, that spark wouldn't be lined up and it wouldn't happen. Now, if your distributor has one of these, funky looking things here that usually has a rubber black vacuum hose attached to it and it's got this kind of sheet metal can or a sheet metal frisbee kind of look to it then um, this is what is adjusting your ignition timing based off of engine load so what's going on in here is there's a rubber diaphragm and that rubber diaphragm is attached to this linkage which is directly attached to our pickup coil so as vacuum is applied to this it's going to suck the, the rubber diaphragm over and move this linkage and advance our pickup. So what I've got here is I've got a vacuum pump. And it's got a little gauge in here so I can actually see how much vacuum is created. And um, these are quite useful for checking anything that's vacuum diaphragm operated. So if I put this end of the hose on here. And as I pump this, you're going to see this linkage move and you should see this pickup coil move. And so remember that this is advancing when our ignition is happening based off of engine load. And so if your engine is at idle, that's got maximum vacuum. So this is what it would be set at at idle. And then as you rev the engine and the engine is under way more load, then you're gonna lose your vacuum. And so you would see this drop back and um, the timing would go back to a base timing. So I'll pump this up here. So you can see that moving. And then if the vacuum was to go away, you can see it goes back. Let's do that one more time. So at idle vacuum is being applied, our ignition timing is being advanced, and then when we get wide open throttle and not a lot of vacuum, we have it drop back. So something really important I wanted to tell you is that all of the stuff that I just showed you, I used distributors that were removed from engines because it's easier for me to show how they work, etc., and all the parts and how they interact with the motor. But um, keep in mind, almost everything we just showed you, you can inspect and replace um, with it in the motor. In fact, I highly recommend you don't take this out from the engine to do all that because when you go to install this, the little gear here can actually go in one tooth 
out of where it used to be and that will actually really affect your ignition timing. That spark is now happening way too early or way too late depending where you put it on the gear. All right, so if you do want to take your distributor out for whatever reason and you want to put it back in, um, you have to mark it. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with it going back in the same spot and your timing is going to be messed up. And it's a bit of a nightmare and a whole other video to show you how to fix that. So what you do is you take your Sharpie before you move any of the brackets or anything and you make a mark on the cap, make a mark on the body and you continue that line down on the body there and put it on to the intake manifold or where the engine meets up with the distributor. And then at this point, you've also got that gear still locked to where the rotor is pointing. And so that rotor will be pointing somewhere specific too. So we wanna make sure that that's marked as well. So we're gonna take spark plug wires off, press down and counterclockwise to get these. And then you'll see that this rotor is pointing somewhere specific too. So since we've got all these lines lined up, we might as well just continue it so that they all have to line up. So right there. And now as long as when you put this back in together that all one, two, three, four of those lines line up, then you're good to go. If you notice that this rotor is over here or over there, then that means that that gear underneath is off by one tooth and you just have to fix that. Now where this distributor is sitting right now, it has a base timing. So if we wanted to adjust the base timing by advancing or retarding the ignition timing, um, we can do that. So down here is a little bolt that holds down a clamp that stops the distributor from moving and locking it into its place for whatever timing you're setting. Now keep in mind when you have the cap and the row, the wires all over here and all of the other parts and it's in a car and this is the back of the engine if it's a Chevy, um, it's very hard to get at. You can't get in here with a wrench very good, you can't get a socket in there. So to be able to get in underneath there, they sell these distributor wrenches that can fit down on that wrench and get your soccer wrench on there or something else. Uh, if you don't have these and you're in a pinch but you got an extra 9 16 half inch wrench, you can always throw this into the vise and throw a couple bends in it so that you have a tool that can get you down in underneath and be able to undo that bolt. So like I said, if I'm trying to install this, this gear could be out a little bit. So when I go to install this and try to line everything up, I have to use those marks to help me line this back up. Don't forget the little gasket in here. And so you can actually see that because that shaft got spun while I had it out that couple seconds there, this is all lined up, but this is not lined up on the rotor. So all you gotta do is basically lift this out so the gear is out. And then if you line it up right there, you'll notice that it'll still change on you. And that's because the gear underneath is helical. So as it engages and you lower it down, it kind of shifts it over. So we know it wants to go this way. So I'm gonna move it about this far opposite way so that when it goes down, it lines up. So like that, now they're all lined up. Now I can lock that position, put the cap back on and I'm back to where I was. Now the distributor cap has a little square chunk here in the plastic and that's gonna go to where there's a little chunk missing out of the distributor body here. And because we made a mark, we know that's gotta go that way too. Now, if you are doing a tune-up and you want to make adjustments to your basic ignition timing, um, you don't have to remove this, this bracket and bolt. You just have to loosen it a couple turns or even just until you can rotate this distributor. And um, basically, depending on which direction your rotor inside, whether it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, as you make this adjustment one way, you may be advancing your timing. So 
having that spark happen earlier, or you might be retarding the timing if you go the other way, which is happening, making the spark happen later than it should. And um, every manufacturer is going to have their base initial timing that you should have it set to, and it's usually a couple degrees before top dead center. One of the things that makes learning about cars really hard is the fact that when you're trying to learn one little thing or one simple thing, part like a distributor you quickly find out that you actually need quite a bit more knowledge to fully understand what's going on so because it's hard to cram everything into these half an hour videos I'm going to do a really brief run through some stuff and then I will focus on just what we need for the distributor this is a cutaway model of an agent four-stroke engine so that we can understand what's going on here so this red part here is our combustion chamber where our air fuel mixture is going to get exploded by our spark plug that would sit somewhere here we have a piston here that can go up and down inside of our cylinders and we have two valves we have an intake valve and an exhaust valve so the four strokes inside a four stroke engine are the following and in this order so we have intake intake stroke the piston is going to travel down which creates a little bit of vacuum it creates a space in here that's bigger than it was before so it creates a vacuum and outside pressure is greater than inside now so when that happens we have an intake valve open so you can see it opening there and we have air coming through a carburetor picking up fuel and that air fuel mixture comes into our combustion chamber so intake piston down intake valve open when it reaches the bottom we start having our compression stroke so notice that the intake valve is now closed and the piston is coming up and what's going on right now is we are squishing and compressing our air fuel mixture inside here to a nice tight little package that's easy to ignite at the very top in an ideal world we would have the spark in perfect timing so that the piston is just reaching and just passing top dead center and once it would develop the explosion in here and have maximum pressure this piston would now be going down and that pressure would be applied fully this is called our power stroke ignition of our air fuel mixture pushing down the piston and both valves are closed so that that pressure can't escape anywhere so power stroke and then the very last stroke is when the piston reaches bottom dead center and starts coming back up this exhaust valve will start opening and the intake valve stays closed and it pushes out all the burnt gases out of the combustion chamber and into our exhaust system and at this point the whole process starts again so intake bringing in air fuel mixture compression we squish that into a tight package and then we have ignition and the start of our power stroke and that piston gets shot down and then the burnt gases get pushed out the exhaust valve during our exhaust stroke. Now some engine terminology that would be really useful for learning about distributors is TDC. So TDC stands for top dead center and what that refers to is when this piston travels up, when it's reached its farthest it's ever going to go up, and this connecting rod is basically at zero degrees, then that's top dead center. And when this is all the way at the bottom, as far as it will go, that's bottom dead center. And since we're here, from the bottom all the way to the top, or the top all the way to the bottom is referred to as a stroke. Now when we're talking about starting the spark for our air fuel mixture earlier than it should be, that's called advancing our ignition timing. So we may advance it five or 10 degrees before top dead center, so that by the time the piston gets to top dead center, that flame front has reached maximum pressure and will give us maximum power on the piston on the power stroke. When we want to have that spark for our air fuel mixture happen later, that's called retarding our ignition timing. And I know what you're thinking, retard. That's not a good word, Dr. J. You can't use that word these days. Um, they still use that word when we're referring to automotive uh, because when this word was developed for engines back in the day, the word retard simply meant delay or delayed. So we're delaying our ignition timing. And um, over the years, people have abused that word and um, we don't use that anymore for people, but we still use it for engines uh, when we're talking about our ignition timing. Some of you might be wondering where am I getting vacuum for our vacuum advance on our distributor. So during our intake stroke the piston is sitting at the top dead center and there's a certain amount of space inside of our combustion chamber. Now when the piston starts to rapidly go down we are all of a sudden creating a space in here where there wasn't one before and that creates a vacuum. At the same time we have our intake valve open and that vacuum is sucking in air and then fuel is applied with that air and we get that air fuel mixture sucked inside of our combustion chamber. 
Now at idle and low speeds, there is more time to create a better vacuum inside the engine. However, as the engine RPM speed up and you're getting to wide open throttles, you have much more air rushing in and there's less and less time for that piston to make a vacuum. So it starts to get diminished. And by the time you get to wide open throttle, you actually have almost no vacuum. All right, so now you can see that there's a lot going on in these things. And um, keep in mind, some dude designed this like a hundred years ago and um, had to make sure that everything worked properly and had vacuum advance to cover load conditions and have mechanical advance to, condi to change conditions for engine RPM. There's a lot going on in these things and it's all gonna happen at perfect timing with other car parts. So really quite cool. So now you can really understand why learning the basic fundamentals of ignition systems on cars is better with a distributor and then go forward. Because if I started teaching this video with this, then uh, this is not going to be helpful. You don't understand what's going on inside the motor and all the different processes that this computer already does for you without you even thinking about it. Now, that being said, these computers are not doing that all on their own. They are a computer. They don't know what's going on outside of it. So they have to have various inputs, which are sensors on your engine, to tell you all kinds of things of what's going on. Coolant temperature, is the car warmed up? Air temperature, is it minus 30 degrees out or is it positive 30 degrees? Uh, engine speed, engine RPM, what's the vacuum? And so all of these inputs get put into the computer and then the computer looks up on charts and ignition timing maps and fuel maps and it makes all the different adjustments and then it sends that information out to outputs so different parts that are responsible for making those changes for you now that we've seen all this stuff about distributors you can kind of start to see that troubleshooting and trying to diagnose and figure out what's wrong with these distributors could be very complicated in fact you could probably make a whole video on being able to diagnose everything on a distributor uh, but this isn't what that series is about this is just basic fundamentals so one of the very first things that I would recommend when you're trying to diagnose whether your distributor is working or not is there's a basic diagnostic skills called last known good part. All right, in this case for the ignition system, doing a last known good part test would be taking off your spark plug boot from a spark plug. So you're actually leaving the spark plug in the engine. Get yourself a second spark plug and then put it back into the wire and then put it against the ground of the engine. And then what you're going to go do is start the engine and see if there is a spark in there or not. If you haven't watched the video in my spark plug wires uh, video, I would highly recommend you do that. All right, so doing that running engine spark plug wire test, you are checking the last known good part. So does the spark plug spark or not? So scenario one, you've done the test on all eight spark plug wires and one or maybe two aren't firing and so what that's telling you is as an overall system the ignition system is working but it's having problems getting it to one or two so that's kind of screaming maintenance items especially if you haven't done the tune-up in five to ten years so spark plug wires spark plugs distributor cap and rotor etc all right scenario two you do that running engine spark plug wire test and every single spark plug wire does not get a spark. So now it's starting to scream that there is a bigger problem, a more system problem or any part in the system that controls all of them. So now we're kind of looking at ignition coil points because the points open and close for every single cylinder, uh, ignition module if you have an HEI distributor, uh, etc. Now that doesn't mean that your cap and rotor and your condenser and spark plugs and wires if they're old and haven't been replaced in a long time still could be that as well and it could be both scenario three you are getting a spark on every single cylinder but the car is still not running very good well there's always the scenario that it could be something else like fuel or air related or low compression but if we're focusing on ignition problems only it's possible that your ignition base timing is off or some of the other parts in your distributor are starting to fail depending on what your distributor has. If you're noticing that your car runs like a bag of dirt when you start it up and, and slow driving around town, then it could be that you have a vacuum advance issue. Maybe the diaphragm inside that vacuum component has failed and um, at idle when there's lots of vacuum, it's not able to advance that spark to get it to fire or easier. Or you might have a problem where as the engine RPMs go up, you start to have kind of misfires and the engine feels like it's losing power. But when it's at idle and low speeds, 
no problems at all. Well, that's kind of screaming mechanical advance this time. So as the engine is getting up to higher RPMs, it can't keep up because it's not advancing the timing as the engine speed goes up. So now you're looking at your mechanical weights, the springs that are there, maybe they've rusted. Now you can bench test a distributor as well. You just have to have a little bit of understanding of the circuit and um, sometimes it's stamped right on the parts. So like the coil will have positive and negative symbols and um, understanding what connections are what and you can bench test these things. So for example, I've got an AGI distributor here. And so when I rotate this, if I get sparks here, then um, it's a good working part. If I don't, then I know that possibly the coil is bad and I can start looking at that or my ignition module and start narrowing it down a bit. I've got the distributor held in the vise. It doesn't really need to be in the vise. And then I've got a pair of vice grips and I've clamped a piece of welding rod, could be a coat hanger from home, to the case of the distributor, which in normal situations would be bolted to the motor, which is the ground for the motor as well. And then that end of the wire is going to the distributor cap. And if you've got a carbon button down there, you're going to want it just a little bit of an air gap away from that. In this case, the button is not in this distributor, it's a random shop part. So I've just put a piece of welding rod down in there and you can see that there's a gap between those rods. And then I've got a power supply applying 12.8 volts. So the red positive is going down onto the connection from my HEI right there. And on this side here, it actually says B plus. So that's battery plus voltage. And that's where that goes. And when I rotate the rotor or rotate the shaft you can hear and see a spark happening there so it is distributing a spark and the coil is working we're getting a high enough voltage to be able to jump that gap so we're proving a whole bunch of components up at this point and um, so this is a way you could bench test a distributor all right, some additional words of wisdom. So 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, it was still economical to do tune-up items on a distributor. You get a new cap, get a new rotor, get a new condenser, get new points, put it all in, do your basic ignition timing, and you got a great running car. But recently, buying those individual parts starts to add up, and um, it's usually these days more cost effective to buy a whole new distributor and replace the whole unit as one. So just some words of wisdom to think of. Bam! There's another video from Way of the Wrench on how to become a gearhead, this time on distributors. And man, oh man, did you ever think there was going to be all these crazy connections to other auto information and theory just off of distributors alone. It was actually kind of challenging to film. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. And um, keep in mind some of the other focused things like where does vacuum come from, four strokes, how to do your basic ignition timing with a timing light. Those will be all future content um, coming your way, just not all in this one video. Um, so as always, if you found this entertaining or educational, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and until next time, cheers.